Water resistance only works when a device stays together, and that isn't the case for my Galaxy Watch. Purchased brand new in 2020, it's lasted three years before falling apart. I recently stuck the silver ring on the bottom back after its adhesive also let go, but now the screen's come off. And it's not the only time I've seen a Galaxy Watch damaged by liquid. I fixed one almost a year ago that had salt water damage. The question is, had its water resistance seal also degraded? Was that the reason it became damaged? I don't know for sure, but some comments on that video suggest other people faced similar issues. Of course, I want to be able to fix my Galaxy Watch, but the question is, will it be water resistant afterwards? So I thought it was time to put it to the test. I'm going to be using pre-cut adhesive and liquid adhesive to seal up two phones and test their resistance to water. Will they survive? The first of these two phones is a Galaxy S8, which featured in a previous video. Because I have no idea how this will turn out, I don't want to use anything working or valuable. So this bent, IMEI blocked motherboard with battery drain and overheating issues will do just fine for what we want. It's been installed in a new frame with a display I attached myself using iFixit adhesive. This screen is brand new, so I'm really hoping this survives because OLED screens are still expensive. Besides the display, water has the opportunity to enter through the speaker, headphone jack, charge port, and earpiece if not properly sealed. With Samsung phones, sealing these areas is not difficult as most pieces come with reusable gaskets and not adhesive. I believe the front display and back are most likely to be the point of entry for any liquid. For this reason, it's important we clean these surfaces of any old adhesive so the new stuff has a proper surface to adhere to and can sit flush with the phone, eliminating any gaps. For the back panel, I have one with adhesive already applied, so it'll be a simple case of removing the protective film and sticking it down. I of course want to make sure it's aligned correctly before pressing it down firmly into place. For the second phone, it's a similar story. It's got another scrap board in it. This one doesn't even turn on. However, I won't be using an adhesive template this time. Instead, a combination of liquid and tape adhesive meaning each of our two phones will use a different method of adhesion. Both methods I've used before, so how will they fare against water? After attaching adhesive in approximately the same areas as had been done originally, I went about applying liquid adhesive around the perimeter of the frame. I think liquid adhesive will be alright at water resistance, as it should spread out when we attach the back, but it's certainly very messy to work with. Of course, another disadvantage with this method is that you need to let the glue cure. For this, you can use some rubber bands or clamps to hold the back panel in place until it dries. I left both phones for 24 hours before coming back to test their water resistance. So it's time for our highly scientific test, also known as a plastic container with water in it. Each phone will be left submerged for one minute. This is quite a basic test, but I feel it represents the most likely occurrences. A simple quick submersion, like being dropped in a sink or having a water bottle leak in your bag. After all, it's called liquid resistance, not liquid proof. In most devices, it's designed for accidents, not deep diving. That's why it's not covered by any form of warranty. Taking it out of the water, I could dry it off with the towel. Just peering through the camera lens, I can't see any water but we'll have to see when we open it up. But before we do that, it's time for the other phone to go for a swim. Well, I think we found the solution to this phone's overheating issues. I guess it's now water cooled? Although the touch isn't working underwater. A quick wipe down and it's like nothing happened. But that doesn't say what's going on inside. So it's time we opened it back up for a look. So it's over to the heat plate for a few minutes before we begin prying the back off. Of course, the quality and age of the adhesive, as well as the type of liquid and the depth, will all play a part in a device's ability to remain undamaged when it comes in contact with liquid. 
It's impossible for me to test everything, but I want to know if there's any resistance at all after repair. Opening up the back panel, I didn't find any liquid at all. And as I dug further inside the phone, I found nothing of concern, even around the speaker. This phone has passed. With one phone successful, I think it's time to see how our other phone fared. The smell of E8000 adhesive is very unpleasant, but it's coming free fairly easily. Inside, you can see the mess it's made. It's not pretty, but it's worked. Just like the S8, there's no immediate ingress of water. And diving a bit deeper, I found some. But it's in a place where it should be, the speaker. The phone is designed to allow water to enter the speaker, but there's a gasket on the frame which prevents that water from passing into the rest of the phone. Despite having a cracked screen, it's kept all the water out. With that, I'm confident that after repair, my Galaxy Watch will be perfectly fine to get water on. The adhesive used is very thin and gooey. I'll need to scrape it all off before applying anything new to ensure we get a water resistant seal. Given just how thin the edges are, I don't think tape adhesive would work well here, as if I could find some, it would likely not hold the screen down. I've experienced this same issue with Apple Watches too. So I'll use liquid adhesive instead. This will also be easier to apply, as I can't remove the display. Once I have the display in place, I can clamp it down for several hours while the glue cures. After which, the clamps can be removed and the excess glue residue can be scraped away. And with that, I once again have a functional watch. So we didn't just fix my Galaxy Watch, but have busted a repair myth. A repaired device can be water resistant if done properly. Both pre-cut adhesive templates and liquid adhesive offer protection against water. But that won't help if the phone isn't repaired right in the first place, whether that's incompetence or bad parts. The difficult thing is there isn't a way to test a phone's water resistance without potentially breaking the device. So I advise you to keep it away from liquid anyway. Most manufacturers don't even cover water damage in warranties, even on brand new devices, which makes it difficult to believe in the resistance in the first place. But if you want the best result, use genuine adhesive where possible and ensure you remove old adhesive before attaching the replacement. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Repair Tips playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.